Now, the Dutch bank Rabobank is bracing itself for a fine in relation to its role in the recent LIBOR-fixing scandal. Now, according to a report in the Financial Times, Rabobank could strike a deal to pay US and British regulators around a billion dollars to settle allegations that it helped manipulate the benchmark lending rate. Well, it would be the fifth penalty in relation to the global investigation and the second biggest after UBS was forced to pay a record fine of $1.5 billion late last year. A settlement could be announced early this week. Well, with me now is uh, Edmund uh, Selverston, uh, equity analyst at Bruin Dolphin. Edmund, good to see you this morning. Many thanks for coming in. $1 billion, that's what's expected. Is that what you were expecting? Not initially, no. This is, a, this is much bigger than we, we previously thought. Um, we knew that uh, UBS have already paid $1.5 billion, um, but uh, we, you know, we've also seen fines from some of the UK companies such as RBS and Barclays of around $400 and $600 million respectively. Um, and so this is much bigger than we thought. We thought the, kind of, the, the average was down. And, and the reason for that is I think there's going to be more focus on uh, not just LIBOR but EURIBOR and, and the Japanese yen indice. So there's a, maybe a bit more complex than we first uh, assumed. So these are the rate-fixing allegations as well. And the size of that fine, it really does indicate, doesn't it, how deeply... Uh, Rabobank was involved in all of this, how, how deep in trouble it was. Yeah, it's, it's very surprising. Uh, Rabobank announced uh, for the first half they're taking some provisions for this, so we were aware that they were in uh, communication with some of the re uh, regulators there, but we didn't believe it was this big. So there are a few questions as to why it's so large and, and how, mm. deep, how deep does it go. And surprising, perhaps, because of the reputation that Rabobank has. It's a cooperative, it's considered to be a sort of friendly sort of bank. It, it doesn't really go with the reputation. No. No, you're right. It is. It's a. It's a mutual. It's owned by the uh, the others. Uh, the other banks. Um, it's. It's used to a kind of farming markets and commodity markets. It's not really looked at, seen as a kind of risky uh, investment bank that some others aren't. So it is a surprise, and it's. It's. It's hard. It's going to tarnish their reputation slightly. Okay, Edmund. Many thanks for coming in and talking about this. Edmund Selverson from Bruin Dolphin. Thank you.